Golf Central on YouTube, brought to you by TaylorMade. Round two of the second major of the year on the LPGA schedule is in the books. The ANA Inspiration Mission Hills Rancho Mirage, California. Temperatures in triple digits in the afternoon in the Coachella Valley. Nelly Corda now with a two shot lead as we head into the weekend on the LPGA Tour. First off, Amanda, thoughts on round two at the ANA? Uh, just talk about great golf. The, that was what blew me away. Also, the golf course, it was playing so scorable. Normally, when I was playing, when it's in April, it's windy. The wind really puts the teeth in this golf course, and there was barely a breath of wind. It was warm and then got hot, but played in great conditions, kind of that dome that we talked about yesterday, and you really saw that it is playing over two shots easier than last year. Last year, Jin Young Ko won with a 10 under, and Nelly Quarter right now is leading with an 11 under. So low scores are out there. You know, this turned out to be a really cool week in golf, schedule-wise, I think, for professional golf. Uh, last week, the PGA Tour ended its FedEx Cup. You might think, well, naturally, there'll be a little bit of a letdown uh, after Dustin Johnson wins that thing, but not at all. Uh, they've started up the PGA Tour again at Safeway. Uh, but here we have an LPGA major this week. Uh, and you can get up in the morning if you're a golf fan and watch the European Tour. And then you've got the PGA Tour and the Ladies Tour out on the West Coast in prime time. It's just turned out to be, I think, a really cool week in golf. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from day two at the ANA. Lexi Thompson, a major champion, 15th hole par four for birdie. She swings out of her shoes, but it's usually that putter that can be her Achilles heel. We did not see that today. She made some beautiful putts. Yeah, 67 in round number two, seven under par, and very much in this movie. Miriam Lee, 13th hole par four, trying to save par. And Miriam, three-time winner on the LPJ Tour. We haven't seen her much of late but showing that she is a past champion. Able to scramble for a 65 and nine under through two days. Nellie Corda talked about her a lot on day one and she was right up there on day two, 14th hole par three. It seemed like yesterday she was just putting on a show for us and just continued that momentum today. Really just flawless round it seemed like. That was 139 yards, nine iron, just rolls it to a few feet and would make birdie. That birdie would get her to seven under at the Dinah Shore Tournament course. Now, another par three, the 17th. Last year, she was third in greens and regulation. Uh, not quite there this year, but uh, not for long. With a swing like that, and a good members bounce too. Bounces it close from 174 yards and would make another birdie. To get to eight under par. Over at the eighth, as she makes the turn, began her day on the back, par three here. Putting. She said, I am the best putter. She's giving herself that confidence and makes another birdie. 67 on the day for Nellie Corda at 11 under par. Take a look at the stats for Corda and how she's been playing since the restart. The LPGA's drive on championship bringing the LPGA back. A steady improvement that included a top three finish at the Walmart Northwest Arkansas Championship. Corda in prime position looking for her first major championship win. Golf's just all about momentum, so you know, you roll one in here and there, and it just makes it a lot easier. You look extremely comfortable. You're chasing your first major title, but what's behind being so comfortable and confident right now? I think just consistent play, you know, and as well, like having fun. Um, my caddy and I have a lot of fun. We giggle out on the golf course, and we just try to keep it super light. I think that's really the key this week. What's been the most important part of your success so far after two rounds? My putting, <laughs> definitely my putting. Thank God for my putting today. <laughs> well, she talked about it today there with Lisa Cornwell. We talked about it yesterday. Her coach trying to convince her to tell herself, as Amanda just alluded to, I am the best putter on tour. She's won three times. She's third in the world. Rolf, let's talk about that putting stroke. Uh, she putted fabulous today, and she made a big change in her putting stroke about three weeks ago. She went from a conventional grip to left hand low on the club. Uh, she made a lot of great birdie putts today. We saw those in the highlights, but I really thought two key putts for her were at her 11th and 12th hole. This is the second hole on the golf course. That is for a par. Uh, bogey in a hole like that would be a momentum killer. And then right away on the next hole, she kind of chops it around the hole again and then holds another one for a par. So the birdie putts are the ones that lower your score, but the par putts are the ones that keep your momentum going.
and she's laughing at that one. Now, I mentioned that Lexi Thompson is a major champion. She won this event back in 2014. Now, four shots back as she heads to the weekend. Amanda, maybe a player we should be watching on Saturday and Sunday. Absolutely. She really does love this golf course. She won, in, like you said, in 2014 and came very close in 2017 after having that little bit of a rule debacle really would have won and uh, loves a golf course, but it fits her game really well. She's very aggressive. They thinned out a lot of trees on the golf course, so she's be able to be more aggressive off the tee. And then that putter sometimes give her some woes, but really we saw her putt well today. She was bogey free, had five birdies. She hasn't been playing great so far this season, had a uh, T7, the first event of the year, but then after the restart has not played well, missed the cut at the AIG. So looking to really do well on a course that she's very comfortable with and has had a lot of success on. Well, 15th hole, Danielle Kang, some bad luck here up against the wall left of the fairway. Amanda, how would you play this shot? Well, you could take a couple clubs, play it safe, but not Danielle. She's going to whack it against the wall and actually hit it a little heavy. Uh, it could have gone a little even farther into the fairway, but an interesting way to play that hole. Yeah, she made bogey, drops to four under after a birdie at 16. Here she is at 18, her second shot. Being aggressive, it's really hard. We want to see a lot of players have been using that uh, backstop, which is totally fine. But Danielle plays it a little bit different. I don't know if I've seen this in a really long time. Plays it onto the bridge. Yeah. That's also a little bit lucky. You know, Jerry Fultz said on the broadcast, essentially now she's hitting off a driving range mat. It's AstroTurf. There's a little padding under it. That's not the worst place in the world to you be know, around this green. It's probably the best lie you're going to get all day. Uh, probably some practice facilities do have that exact turf and it hits it very clean. It, you expect that to be a pretty fast chip also down uh, towards the water, but well placed. Have you heard the nickname for that wall, by the way? They call it the Great Wall of Dinah. <laughs> that is awesome. It's fantastic. Brooke Henderson, 14th hole, par three, second shot. How about the putter, please? I would, especially when it's downhill like that. You want to stay above the hole, and that was going to be very slick. She makes it look easy. Five under for Henderson. She shot 71. As we take a look at the notables, and there you see the logos there. Maria Fossi, Leona McGuire, Bronte Law, each past winners of the Annika Award presented by Stiefel, presented annually to the top female U.S. collegiate golfer. Comments now from some of the pursuers at the ANA. Yeah, well, the course is in great shape for us, and we can't get any better weather, maybe a little on the hotter side, but I'm from Florida, so kind of used to it. But... A great event once again, um, different with a, no fans, but I've played some good golf the last two days, so just trying to keep up the confidence and keep up the changes that I've been working on and take it into the weekend, just focus on my game and one shot at a time and see where it goes. Yeah, growing up in South Florida, she's not worried about the heat, although it's a different kind of heat out on the West Coast. Some other players, Miriam Lee was one that you mentioned that uh, you've got your eye on. I do, mostly just because she's closest right now to Nelly. Nelly has really just taken leaps and bounds above uh, the rest of the pack right now. And Miriam Lee is just two shots back uh, going into the weekend. And she, she has won before. The last time was, in, was back in 2017 at the Kia Classic and then twice in 2014 and has not really played well since then. She's only played in two events so far this year and has missed the cut both times, one being just last week. But she knows how to win. She's got it. She's getting it done. And she's also playing very well here. She's only made one bogey in 36 holes. She had a bogey free round today. So really putting the pieces together and the fact that she knows how to win, that never goes away. Even if you're not playing very well, you always have that in your back pocket. So just the fact that she's closest to Nelly and has had that winning experience and not making, not getting herself into much trouble, only one bogey. I do like her chances. Mentioned a couple of times, it is the second major of the year for the LPGA Tour. Let's check in on the race to the CME Globe and a quick update with standings entering the ANA Inspiration. Unlike previous years, winning an LPGA Tour event does not automatically earn a player entry into the CME Group Tour Championship. The points race is the only way to get to that event. Normally, the winner receives 500 points. Major championship this week, 625 points on the line in the race to the CME Globe. On to the weekend we go at this second major of the year with live coverage on Saturday, starting with our pregame at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Going to be a hot one in Palm Springs. Who can withstand that heat?